Okay, so there's been a lot of stuff on the interwebs about, like, how Common Core is evil and wrong and horrible. And one of the big controversies has been Common Core math. So we're going to look at how the new Common Core math works. We're going to look at um, what the old way kind of missed. We're going to look at how to do the new way. Uh, then we're going to look at why there's a new way. And then we're going to look at why so many people are upset about it. And really, it's politics. First up, you've all seen this. And there's a couple of kind of a things with this. Um, honestly, if I saw this for the first time, I would be confused out of my brains. If I grew up doing this and suddenly went to this, I would be confused. So keep that in mind. Also, it's purposefully vague. It's purposefully confusing. And it's also got this little thing down here, facebook.com slash mentally emancipated. That's propaganda. That's just trying to get you to think that this is the way to go, that this is something that you've been confused by or should be confused by. There's no explanation. There's just this number line with these weird bouncy things and these numbers over here. And goodness, how did we get here? But the old way. Let's look at the old way real quick. So, okay, 243 minus 87. Uh, all right, now I need to. I know I need to put a 1 here, so that's oh, uh, 4... Uh, and then do that again. Jeez. Every time I do this, I always have the same thing. I want to say it's four because there's, uh, but uh, no, it's a six. It's a six. Yes. So then uh, it's two. No, because I know it's got to be because the the thing with the one. So one sixty four. Is that right? No, because thirteen is six. Right? 166? No. Yeah, so 13 minus 7 is 6. Okay, good. Yes, I know this. So 166. Yes, that's not the answer. Okay. Great. So, you can see... Oh, because I forgot to carry a 1. Okay, so that should have been... Thir okay. Uh, there we go. That's what it was. So 156. There we go. I finally got the right answer. Now, if this were a testing situation, and I didn't already know that the answer was 156, I probably would have got that wrong. Now, those of you who don't know me very well might have think that I was acting there a little bit, and I kind of was, but honestly, that's the answer I came up with the first time I tried to do this question, the quote-unquote old-fashioned way. Uh, lots of scribbling out wrong numbers, lots of arrows and circling the wrong answer, and scribbling it out and scribbling out something else and finally coming up with the right answer. Now, if this were a testing situation, you might have a teacher who says, all right, now add it back up and get 87 plus 156, and I'm going to have all of the same problems there trying to get to the right answer again. So let's look at it the new way. So we have 243 minus 87. Really, what we want to know is what's the difference between 243 and 87. So we start off here at 87. Now, I know that 87 plus 3 gets me to 90, right? So 90. 90 to 100 is 10. All the way up to 200, another 100. And then over here to 240. Three. So plus 43. I don't know why I drew this little plus sign here, but I did. So let's do 100 plus 43 is 143, plus 10 is 153, plus another 3 is 156. 156. The correct answer. I can real quick double check my work. 200 to 243 is 43, so that's correct. 100 to 200 is 100, that's correct. 100 to 90, that's correct. 90 down to 87, well, I can simplify that. Okay, so I know that that's 3, pretty simple. So 3 plus 10 is 13, plus 100 is 113, plus 43 is 156. So again, I've got the answer pretty simply. Now that you see it, 
now that you know that number lines work pretty easily, um, why are we kind of looking at it? Why are we doing this? So the first question you need to ask yourself is what's the point of learning math in 2014? I have a calculator, I have a phone, I have a computer, I have a whole host of different ways to find the correct answer and check it. I don't need to know addition and subtraction for the sake of addition and subtraction. That's why Common Core focuses on the process in order to understand the answer. Number lines are a common way of um, teaching math concepts to struggling learners. I've done some math tutoring, and so has my partner Carrie. We've both learned that math lines are a really good way to explain the process to getting to the answer, and that can help some struggling learners. And furthermore, once advanced learners understand the process of addition and subtraction, multiplication and division and the process, not just the kind of the numer numerological magic that can happen, they can go farther. Our children are going to need to know how to program computers to some extent. It's just going to be a de facto way of life. Part of programming computers is the process. How do I get from point A to point B? That process is the key, and that's what the, this new way of teaching math really focuses on. Now that all makes sense, so why do I see so many hate messages about Facebook? Well, there are two main reasons that you see a lot of hate messages on Facebook about the Common Core. Uh, there's the conservative argument and the liberal argument. The conservative argument is that it's federally mandated and it's bad. Well, it's not exactly federally mandated. It's kind of federally highly recommended, and they've added some uh, motivational money called Race to the Top to Common Core. So if a state wants that extra money from the federal government, then they have to go and use Common Core. Now, I think three states have said, we don't really care about the money. We're well-funded enough. We don't want your money. Go home, and we're not doing Common Core. And that's fine. Um, in all reality, they probably will be doing Common Core once their, their curriculum revisions are done. And you can look into that yourself and see what the curriculum revisions actually look like. The liberal argument is that it's tied to testing, and that's bad. So, sure, liberals don't like testing. Um, and there's lots of good reasons to not like testing. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't help us to understand what students are learning in a realistic way. Um... But the problem with both of these arguments is that they're both red herrings. They don't have anything to do with the uh, success or failure of students learning new concepts. Um, they're both tied to political motivations. And really, a lot of the hate in Common Core is politically motivated. It's a popular thing. Change is not an easy thing to accept. So when change comes around, it's popular to hate on it and look. We're in an election cycle. Both sides are going to be arguing against Common Core simply because they want to be reelected. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope it helps to spur some positive conversation around Common Core as opposed to just ranting and raving about how evil it is. Thanks. Have a great day.